Hey, what's up guys? This is Enemy Stan User, and in this particular video, we are going to be talking about recent events in the manga of JJK, as well as some of my thoughts on what we could have a chance to see during the calling game. The recent chapter 158 was incredibly hype, so I wanted to kind of summarize my take on it, as well as give some fresh ideas now that we have the official scans and the viz translation is out so please enjoy the video and let's get right into it like i said in my previous calling game thoughts video everything really points to this sort of jujutsu world evolving in the series and i missed this a little bit in my chapter reaction but sukuna he may have been a demon god and he is the king of curses but he was not the only immensely powerful sorcerer at that time and now you could say that we're getting to see so to speak these ancient gods these really powerful and immensely powerful sorcerers uh, introduced in the manga and with the coin game players hana Kurosu, kashimo hajime huguruma hiromi and maybe there's likely more as time goes on and already they are key figures in this arc with the sorcerers forced to engage them and use their points to save others. But I should also add these sorcerers are likely extremely powerful and volatile as two of them already have an insane kill counts and are making new rules in the coin game. And Hana is literally a key for Gojo's freedom as far as the sorcerers know. So they are extremely important already. And you know, not all the sorcerers coming back could be pure evil and might have other sort of you could say incentives that let them to be in line with the coin game and to form vows with people like kenjaku and i'm sure with how convincing and how scheming kenjaku is he likely forced many sorcerer into really an unfavorable position but of course that's just my own take and it it could be actually that actually could be the other way around concerning Sukuna's involvement and what we have read even way way back in like chapter three it said the golden in the golden age sorcerers had sharpened their skills against Sukuna against him and they were defeated and most of these now powerful cursed objects now reincarnated as sorcerers they probably do have a bone to pick with Sukuna and fighting Sukuna may be their objective in the game. And I'm sure we are really going to see some extremely high level sorcery and fights, even beyond levels we might have seen previously in other arcs. It's going to be really insane and really awesome. Consider the calling game itself as well. The game is really set up in this ritual like state to force all of Japan to evolve past the point of no return and all the factors like the rules and conditions set in this ritual will not stop until it's finished even if kenjaku dies the game won't stop and things like ancient sorcerers coming back do not help the situation for the sorcerers at all though if you think about ghetto or kenjaku's plan it's not really a terrible proposal or a terrible plan you might say and he's forcing the barrier between curses and humans down which would lead to evil and darkness spreading but even kenjaku doesn't know what will happen past that and his words they're really important they're really powerful and they really echo in the series even now with him stating the answer is always flickering darkly in the chaos kenjaku wishes to bring about chaos and imbalance to the world to create something new something beyond the curse something beyond human something beyond a sorcerer and kujaku he tried and failed to do that with something like a cursed womb but no one really knows what this answer is but this answer will reveal itself when the world is reborn back to the golden age or this sort of hien period and i think this proposal is why ghetto has so many curses as well as cursed users and sorcerers on his side they might want this change to come about and he formed millions of packs and vows to bring his plan into light. Sukuna too is hinted that he too might have been one of the sorcerers that formed a pack with Kenjaku. Maybe for his own sort of full revival, maybe to become human again or simply just to see this new world come about. But the thing is that Fushiguro actually saw Yuji eat Sukuna out of his own free will. So it really mixes things up to whether 
uh, Sukuna, whether it Sukuna had a hand in this sort of calling game, but whatever the case is, Sukuna is definitely up to something and he needs Megumi for it. And even Yuji understands this now that Yuji is a calling game player, even without entering a barrier. Sukuna is not going to stay dormant for long, and I have a feeling that the next time we see Sukuma when he comes out of Yuji, the situation would be terribly screwed and extremely screwed for the sorcerers. Heck, some even have the theory that Sukuna can eat people and take their curse technique. And I definitely would not put it past him since he is a curse. And his, I guess you could say his assistant sort of servant, Urume, is a chef that prepares human meals to Sukuna. Something I should mention too is that someone pointed out I was missing the different ages for the characters and I was, like you mentioned, Tengen being 1,200 years old, and I honestly did not know that. And that really explains why he knows so much about Kenjaku and concerning um, his own relevance and concerning Kenjaku himself and his own ability, Kenjaku's curse techniques, which might imply that Kenjaku had the ability to turn humans into curses curses which is absolutely crazy and it's it's kind of not surprising considering how kenjaku is and him uh how he made those cursed wombs as well and him being he, he basically is the prime suspect in orchestrating nearly all the events up to the present he's initiated the culling game and formed vows with curses as well as sorcerers alike and he was even hinted I say hinted, he might even have been Yuji's freaking mom. So everything involving Yuji could have been according to his plan. According, all according to plan. I mean, at this point, Kenjaku is, he's almost looking better than Aizen. But the rabbit hole just continues to go so deep. And of course, I might miss some things and I'm not big brain kind of like how Toto is. But please, guys, continue to share your own thoughts. And I know that you guys are really smart and have something to share or to add to the vid. So it, even if it's not much, even small comments matter. So your input helps out tremendously. Moving on from that, though, on the sorcerer's side right now, there is a huge vacuum of power with Gojo sealed. And it seems Kinji Hikari would like to use Megumi as more like a leverage chip to keep his own fight club. But he did agree to help out in the culling game. So I think that is good that the sorcerers do have this help with Hikari. But I still think they might need some more help. Even besides Hikari even along with uh, Yuta. But what I do think is that right now the really helpful characters like Toto or someone like Nobra and Anami, they're either dead or they're gone. And I think that's where the higher ups can really lend some aid finally with maybe some finally other foreign Jujutsu factions. We know that Meimei does have connections and maybe could help with some sort of incentive when we, how she knows she is. Hello, I like money. And we could maybe get to see different jujutsu divisions like the ainu division that was mentioned before maybe they could step in and help even if things right now they do seem desperate and things seem lost in japan they it's, it's not like this is the only place in jujutsu that there is there's they're not alone and this colon game could very well decide the fate of the planet and is really a worldwide scale or act of jujutsu terrorism that can really turn the tables of power all around the earth. Another really important factor I wanted to discuss a little bit about, it is right now it's a bit morbid, but it's future character deaths and what might happen to them. And I'll only mention a couple of the deaths, but first up is Megumi. And considering the very large amount of hype, speculation, and predictions about how Sukuna will use him, and Sukuna might kill Megumi in the process. And I think that is kind of plausible given the nature of this manga and the sort of character Megumi is and how he doesn't want to give up anything and what he's willing to use as a sorcerer. And he gives off just massive, massive death flags with his own speech and sacrificial actions as a sorcerer. He does what it takes uh, that he... 
he really does what it takes when it comes to being a sorcerer from time to time but next up is Toto and that is something that would really make me heartbroken if he did perish in the series but given his own awesomeness and his charismatic nature and the love that Toto was willing to show as a sorcerer as well as being a brother to Yuji I don't wouldn't put it past Toto that to make a grand sacrifice for the group and for him being an excellent example as a sorcerer for Yuji even Hikari right now like Hikari seems like he could be an older senpai for Yuji given his actions about talking about the fever and how different people sort of give Yuji different things like Nanami, Toto and different teachers like Gojo they all give Yuji something to, to for for him as a sorcerer so maybe even Hikari could give you something to Yuji but next I would again I'll be heartbroken about a fan favorite brother Chozo and I could definitely see Chozo giving himself up for his brother Yuji, considering how much he loves his brother now that he knows he is his brother, as well as him giving himself up for the good of humanity now that he's lined up with sorcerers and that he has changed a little bit. But it seems like um, Chozo's hatred for Kenjaku is really the most volatile as uh, really Chozo has the most reason to hate Kenjaku considering what he's done to his brothers and himself and even to Yuji but the next I think next time Chozo sees Ghetto he would probably go ballistic but I think Chozo is a solid option as well the last option I'm thinking of at the moment would have to be Tsukimi and at first I was thinking what if she was a person influenced by this sort of change in the bench and this sort of uh, cursed energy evolution with evil in all Japan causing Tsukimi to become this really cold hearted person, this really confused person, kind of like how Junpei was in that situation. And that in, and of, that in and of itself would be really bad, but a comment brought out, what if Tsukimi came back as an ancient sorcerer? And better yet, what if this particular sorcerer had beef with Sukuna and Sukuna engage and engage with Sukuna or Yuji and eventually gotten taken down by Sukuna, killing Sukimi. And I'm sure Megumi would be forced into a desperate situation to kill his sister, to save his sister, to save Yuji, to kill Yuji. And just with that situation alone, there are so many conclusions you could draw just from that, based just on those three characters. It that that is just crazy that is crazy but i'm sure there is a lot more to speculate but with, with that just with that situation alone that, that's enough for a whole video and something i almost forgot to mention is of course yuji itadori's death and that is something very obvious in the series given how and even in the manga his death was set in stone since really day one but some further evidence is that really Chozo's words and Chozo's sort of ability per to perceive his brother's death and how he did see Yuji dying in the near future but we have basically seen Yuji quote-unquote die two times already from a situation with Sukuna and when he was defeated by Yuta if and you could include it almost three times if you include Yuji's defeat by Chozo so Yuji definitely is not a stranger to facing any sort of possibility of dying but that's just my take on it but Yuji's his he's really solid his, his he knows his time is still ticking and he's really trying to save as many people as he can before his own time is up but whatever happens I hope we really do get to see some more characters return as well as get some more aid from whoever is willing to help out the sorcerers because the situation in Japan is really spiraling out of control and it won't be long until we see new sorcerers morphed that weren't sorcerers before mor morphed because of idol transfiguration they will start rampaging and changing just because the balance of power is tipped and we right now we're looking at the beginning of a full-scale war on cursed energy a, a monopoly on cursed energy and the the coin game itself is definitely going to be an arc to keep a very very close eye on thank you guys for checking out this video 
Hopefully you enjoyed it or at least got a little bit out of it, but remember to like, share, and subscribe for more manga and anime related content and to check out some of my other videos as I try to go into depth a little bit more into other aspects of the series. But stay tuned and I appreciate you. Thank you. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.